Good morning, DreamHouse Nation. James Lewis of TDH joining us from the Duluth Trading Cure Bowl is Alan Gooch. We are excited to have him, but before we get to him, we're going to give out our email address because we're going to give out some prizes. DreamHouseNation at gmail.com. That's DreamHouseNation at gmail.com. Our fans know to write in to win some prizes, and Alan's got some great prizes for us. Alan, thank you for joining us today. Appreciate it, James. Thank you. So what is the Duluth Trading Cure Bowl? Well, the Duluth Trading Cure Bowl is a platform uh, through the great game of college football, a way for us to raise money for cancer research, James. We've been doing it. Uh, this will be our eighth Cure Bowl. We've raised $3.8 million for cancer research to date, and uh, we're very proud of that and hoping to uh, solve cancer someday. Uh, we, you know, we, we, we certainly believe that it can happen. Uh, the progress is being made, and, and we're, uh, we're happy to use the great game of college football to keep pushing that me- message out and raising money for cancer research. That is phenomenal that you're able to take something everybody loves to get rid of something <laughs> everybody hates. That's, you know what, James? I love that. You don't mind if I use that, right? I don't mind at all. That's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> That's right. That is a good one. So how did it get started? Well, we, uh, we've we got a partnership with ESPN, and they were looking to expand into the bowl business. And uh, we were working down that road, and we had some people that were involved with us that had, as unfortunately as many families have, they've been touched by the devastation of cancer. And so initially it was going to be a component, but we flipped it around and we said, why don't we just make it our mission? And so it is our mission statement, bringing teams together to find a cure for cancer. So out of all the bowls in the country, there are 43 bowls, uh, you know, we're the one that's got our mission statement out front. We are the cure bowl and uh, our whole, we're wholly devoted to raising money for cancer research. And um, so that's how it got started. Well, that is awesome that it is for such a a great cause. So who's playing in the game this year? This year we've got uh, the only conference champion matchup in the bowl business. We've got University of Texas San Antonio that's ranked number, well, depending on the poll, they're ranked 22, 23, and 25 in the three different polls. But they're top 25 team. Uh, 11 and two and against Troy University that is 11 and two and they're the uh, Sunbelt Conference champions. So we've got UTSA Conference USA champs and uh, Troy University that is the uh, Sunbelt Conference champions going up against each other on Friday, December 16th at three o'clock p.m. And so for all your listeners out there, we're going to be on ESPN, the mothership and and we're hoping to have a big viewing rating, which will certainly help us raise money for cancer research. That is awesome. I mean, it sounds like it's going to be a great game. It's two uh, conference champions. So is that how you decide who's in the game? You get the uh, conference champions? That, James, is uh, uh, typically a part of it. But you know, there are 43 bowls in the country. And so not everybody's going to get a conference champ. You have to be bowl eligible, and to be bowl eligible, you have to have six wins. So this year, uh, there were enough bowl eligible teams with six wins. Uh, I think that's 82 slots this year. And, uh, yeah, we're we're just happy to have two conference champions in ours. Definitely. Now, I want to talk about my bowl game because we're working on starting the Chili Bowl here in Cincinnati. (laughs) We're we're not sure which chili company we're going to get to sponsor it, but it'll be one of the chili companies. Yes, one of the two. (laughs) Either them or Gold Star. We're we're happy either way because I I think it'd be great to get a bowl down at Paul Brown Stadium. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. You know, uh, you guys have got it going on in Cincinnati. We're 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 fired up for you. I, I was glad to hear Joe Burrow be excited about playing uh, NFL football back in his home state. So I, I love that. So tell us about how great it is playing the game at the Explorer uh, Stadium. Exploria Stadium is an MLS stadium here in Orlando. James holds twenty five thousand. So we have an opportunity to 
to uh, pack that in and get a lot of synergy. It's got a canopy on top, keeps the noise in from the two schools that have their bands in the in the stands. So we we really like it. You know, it's close to downtown. Uh, we have a a march to cure that starts at downtown with both of the team bands, and we march three blocks from from historic Church Street Station to Exploria Stadium. So it's an outstanding little little parade that we put on uh, honoring all the uh, survivors and those that we've lost. And um, it, it's it's really grown into an, a, a nice event that uh, is a good precursor to the to the game. But uh, we wouldn't be able to do that if we weren't playing at Exploria Stadium right downtown. So where is the best place for the Dreamhouse Nation to buy their tickets? Go to curable.com. You know, there's a lot of opportunities uh, there to be a member, uh, a lot of different levels. You know, you can start as low as $37 and go as high to have it, uh, all the food and beverage you would like and Skyline Chili in the club at $150 <laughs> a ticket. <laughs> nice. Yeah. But, yeah. What are some of the other you know, events? You know, you know, James, I will say this. Uh, I know, you know, local, all the local people there in Cincinnati – uh, you know, we the Cincinnati Bearcats were down here in Orlando to play UCF not long ago, and uh, so we're we we know Cincinnati football, and we certainly respect and appreciate that. But for the fans there in Cincinnati or or, the, or your listening area, uh, certainly can go online and buy a ticket and donate it to a family that is battling cancer, or we have veterans that are battling cancer, teachers first responders. So we, uh, buying a ticket and donating it helps us and helps the cause. Oh, wow. That is awesome. Yeah. I was going to say, I didn't even think about that, but you're right. Yeah. Shoot. You can send someone who, you know, wants to go to the game, you know, or is closer and that is dealing with something, some trauma in their life, like you said, you know, with the uh, cancer and kind of brighten up their day or brighten up their life. Yes, exactly right. It's, um, you know, Orlando goes pink on Cure Bowl Day. That is awesome. So what other events happen dur uh, during the week of the Cure Bowl? You know, James, uh, our, both of our teams are going to be reporting on Monday. And uh, so we have a welcome reception, and we, we house the teams at Universal Studios in Orlando. One team will stay at the Portofino Bay. The other team will stay at the Royal Pacific. And uh, they practice at local high schools right around Universal Studios, and uh, they have an opportunity to go to the park while they're here. Uh, but we also do some good with the teams while they're here. Uh, they will pack about 23,000 meals on Thursday. Next Thursday, they'll be packing 23,000 meals for uh, families that are uh, uh, needing that support. And so it's, it's really a great opportunity to teach young men uh, in these programs about giving back to the community. Uh, we have Duluth Trading that is sponsoring that. So Duluth Trading Company has been a great partner of ours. They understand and get the cause. They're actually going to be donating as well uh, with a check presentation that you would see on uh, on Friday, December 16th on national television. So it's um, it's fun, uh, you know, and, and out at the events, the, uh, the players staying out at Universal, they get to have some fun, but they also understand uh, what this game is about. It's about giving back to, to the community and raising money for cancer research that they also get to participate in packing some food for some families that need it. Well, that's it. Sign me up. I want to go to the Cure Bowl next year. Come on down. Let's go, James. Let's go. Awesome. And then last year you had uh, you had a great game. You had the Coastal Carolina game versus Northern Illinois. Tell us a little bit about that. We had, yeah, you know, we had a MAC champ last year in Northern Illinois, and uh, they and Coastal Carolina battled it out. They both had uh, ten win teams as well. So we've had some great games. CBS Sports actually ranked it as the number one bowl to watch last year. It was decided in the last seven seconds, and uh, yeah, it was very exciting. The year before that, we had two top twenty-five teams in Liberty and Coastal Carolina, and they went into overtime. Uh, so we've actually had some great. Get, and all of our games have been close, and we've had some lo local media talking about that, and they think, "Guy, Alan, you've got some lucky horseshoe. And I say, you know, I, I don't think it's that. I think it's that these kids come together, and they realize, they're, they realize what this game is about, 
Um, and when we have our press conference, you would think that they have a script uh, to promote it, and they just talk about how important this game is and their families that have been touched by cancer, their own families, families within their football team, and they all talk about the different people that they're going to be playing for that day. And so when they come out here, they're playing not just for themselves, but they're playing for others. And I think that's why there's such a battle going on at a bowl game. That is awesome because you're right. Unfortunately, some bowl games, there are people that are, you know, more worried about what they're going to do after the bowl game. They're worried about their drafts, you know, that stack. But it sounds like with this game, it's really players who are very passionate about the game of football and about the people that have been affected by cancer in their lives and they're out there and they're supporting them and they're representing them. And that is just so beautiful. You're absolutely right. It is, uh, uh, I, I've been honored to be a part of it, James, honored to be a part of it. So last year you had a great commentary team. You had Mike Morgan, you have, uh, Kirk Morris, Don, uh, day of import. I mean, you just had a great team yeah. calling the game. Tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, you know, it's the the, uh, the different groups that have called the game, you know, they, they get it, and we really appreciate them pushing out the message after uh, the game and before. You know, they're promoting the game and then and then doing the game and then they're pushing it out after. So we, we love getting uh, different groups to come in and do the game. I know this year we got uh, Beth Mowens is doing it, and, uh, you know, it's it's going to be her first time. So we're, we're happy to do that. We're hoping to get Holly Rowe at some point to do uh, the sideline work for us in fact because she is a breast cancer survivor and talks about it uh quite a bit she 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 would be a great addition to uh to the game at some point so we we love and appreciate all of those who have, who have been a part of that and 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 handle the game for us both on radio and and television uh, it's been outstanding and uh you know they get it they get it Sounds phenomenal. Um, before we let you go, where on social media, where on the web, where can we find out about the Cure Bowl? Yeah, www.curebowl.com, James. Uh, you know, all of our social media platforms are listed there. We would love for everybody, uh, you know, to get on and talk about it and, and tell your story. You know, every Wednesday we have a Wednesday Warrior story uh, through our s- social media because uh, unfortunately cancer is out there touching so many. So we want to have an effect and, and help people. You know, we, we're bringing people together to find a cure for cancer, uh, and we're bringing teams together to find a cure for cancer. And, you know, that's our mission statement. And so we're, we're doing that through social media. Uh, we're doing it through the, the Orlando Sports Foundation is the 501c3 nonprofit that puts on this game. And we have 10 events that we do in Central Florida to raise money for cancer research nationwide. And our signature event is the Cure Bowl, but we have other events. We do high school all-star games, golf events. We have some outstanding golf courses here in Central Florida. So anybody in Cincinnati that has a, you know, would like to do a corporate outing and raise some money for cancer research, come on down. Look at, get on our website at curebowl.com and you'll see all that we do here to raise money for cancer research nationwide. Sounds great, Alan. It's been a pleasure having you on the show today. Thank you so much, James. I really appreciate the uh, opportunity to share our message. Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom has products in stock and available to take home today. With five stores and almost 40 years in business, they are Ohio's appliance experts and they help you to get the right product at the right price with a huge inventory. You can save 30 to 60% every day on everything from Bosch and Viking to LG, GE, and KitchenAid at unbeatable savings and in stock. Plus, Mattress Kingdom inside Appliance Factory has everything from Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, Stearns and Foster, and Dream Cloud mattresses in stock. Stop by any one of Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom's five Ohio locations today or visit online at appliancefactory.com. Good morning, Dreamhouse Nation. James Lewis of TDH joining us today from the Independence Bowl is Eric Evenson. Before we get to Eric, we're going to give out our email address. It's dreamhousenation at gmail.com. That's dreamhousenation at gmail.com. And our listeners know when we give out our email address, that means to write in to win prizes. And Eric's got some cool prizes for us. Eric, what is the Independence Bowl? Uh, The Independence Bowl is a uh, college football bowl game down here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Uh, 2022 will be our 46th year. So we are the 11th 
oldest bowl game. We like to call it the 11th most historic bowl game in college football. Um, so it's it's been around uh, ever since 1976, named after our nation's uh, bicentennial. And we just love putting on a college football game every year here for the locals in, uh, in Shreveport, Bossier City. Uh, something unique. It's the biggest sporting event down here in Shreveport, and uh, it, it's a lot of fun every year. So that's awesome. So basically, the, it started to honor our nation's bicentennial? Yes, it did. So the Sports Foundation down here uh, started it in 1976, and it was named after the uh, the bicentennial. And with uh, Barksdale Air Force Base being here in, in Bossier City, um, in our local community, and having the strong ties with the military, both uh, or in our community, the bowl kind of started something that could uh, that could honor the military and uh, the nation, and uh, that's kind of how it got started. And we've had strong ties with the military ever since. Nice. And then I understand that uh, one of the teams playing in the game has uh, ties to locals, uh, and the other team has a tie to um, the Cincinnati's conference, the AAC. Yep. So this year we are uh, we have the Louisiana Raging Cajuns uh, matching up against the Houston Cougars, and it's uh, two teams that have never played in the Independence Bowl before. So two first time teams, and uh, Louisiana is actually the only uh, team from our state, uh, FBS team from our state that's never played in our game before. We've had Louisiana Tech, LSU, uh, Louisiana Monroe, McNeese State back in the old days. They were one of the first teams to play in the Independence Bowl. But we've never had uh, the Raging Cajuns in in the game uh, as well as Houston. So um, two really good kind of regional teams for us, which is great for people to be able to drive up here. Uh, the you know the day before the game or the day of the game and come to uh, come to the bowl. So we're really excited about it. Definitely, that does make a big impact on that. I mean, it makes it so much more fun when you have the teams closer and then they can uh, actually get there and experience it live with the fans. But for those fans that can't make it to the game, how can they watch the Independence Bowl? So we are on uh, ESPN this year. This is our thirtieth consecutive year on an ESPN network. Uh, we were actually one of the first bowls to be on ESPN. So uh, this is uh, so, so this is we'll be on ESPN on Friday, December twenty third at two or two o'clock Central, three p.m. Eastern. So uh, you can tune into ESPN and 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 watch the game. The neat thing about your bowl game is uh, having the stadium and the game have the same name. I think that probably helps out a lot. Yeah, it does. It's. Uh, it gets a little confusing for some people sometimes because it's called it's technically called Independence Stadium, but a lot of people down here call it the Independence Bowl. But um, it's nice to uh, have that tied in. And the stadium was actually uh, named after our game. Uh, after a few years, it used to be uh, State Fair, uh, uh, Fairgrounds Field. And after a few years, they renamed it after the game and named it Independence Stadium. So uh, another nice tie-in to uh, to our country and to kind of the military and just uh, just the all-around theme of the game. Nice. For those listeners that uh, are interested in going down and attending the game, where's the best place for the Dreamhouse Nation to buy their tickets? You can buy tickets at uh, independencebowl.org slash tickets. That'll give you access to all of our ticket packages. We have individual tickets, uh, group tickets, family four packs, uh, all all different kinds of packages. Uh, So independencebowl.org slash tickets, and that'll take you to everything you need. Now, the neat thing about bowl games is it's not just a bowl game. What are the other events that are happening the week of the Independence Bowl? Yep, so we see this game as more of a traditional bowl experience. Like I said, we were the 11th oldest bowl game. So uh, once the players get in town, they have all types of different uh, events that uh, they go to. They have a taste of Louisiana uh, for the players. They all, there's, we also take them to different nonprofits in the area. But then for fans, we have a few different events as well. We have uh, the big game show, which is a, uh, a competition between the, uh, the two teams of the, uh, the Independence Bowl where the uh, the players uh, compete in kind of trivia style questions. There's family feud style questions. There's uh, uh, Jeopardy style questions, different things. So the players get to compete in that. And then uh, the night before the game is our big night of events. We have a uh, Mardi Gras preview parade that kicks off the night. 
uh, a battle of the marching bands between the two schools. And then we uh, culminate the night with a, uh, a big concert. We'll have Parrish County Line coming up from Baton Rouge, Louisiana for that night. And all of those are free. So uh, a lot of events throughout Bowl Week that fans can enjoy and then the players also enjoy as well. Wow. I mean, it sounds phenomenal. Sounds like just a great experience from start to finish. Yep, it, it really is. It's uh, it's a lot of fun. And we kind of see we're a nonprofit organization that puts on the bowl. So we see the bowl game as a uh, kind of a culmination of everything we do throughout the year, not only in the community, but throughout bowl week with all those events. Tell us about last year's game against uh, UAB and BYU. It was a great game. It was uh, it was raining sideways. It was windy. It was cold, but it was a lot of fun. Uh, BYU actually was uh, came into the game as the highest ranked team to ever play in the Independence Bowl. They they were ranked 13th in the College Football Playoff uh, poll last year, uh, coming into the game, and they got upset by UAB. Uh, so it was a really good game, uh, just back and forth. Both running backs had uh, had over 180 yards, just big plays, lots of excitement, and uh, it came down to the wire with UAB winning 31-28. So. Uh, it was a, it was a heck of a game and a lot of fun. Sounds phenomenal. Now tell us about your sponsor. How great they are. Oh, Radiance Technologies is our title sponsor, and they came on in uh, actually 2020, uh, right before the uh, the start of uh, the pandemic. And they, but they've been great to work with. They're a uh, a military tech uh, company. They do a lot of work with the Department of Defense, um, and uh, they're based out of Huntsville, Alabama. They also have a uh, big office in Dayton. Um, so they, uh, th- they're they really great to work with. They've been huge in supporting us. Uh, they are, uh, their, their contract is signed through t- uh, 2025. So they're on for a, a, a good long contract and they're just amazing to work with. They're really supportive and uh, we love having them on board. And it's, it's great for uh, kind of our bowl in terms of what we're tied into. They're biggest contractors are you know the army the air force the navy so um to kind of bring them into this uh you know this military field this military type bowl um it, it's great it does it sounds phenomenal where on social media where on the web where can we find out more about the independence bowl yep so website independencebowl.org that'll uh, take you right to our website and then on all social media twitter facebook and Instagram, you can follow us at Indie Bowl, I N D Y Bowl. So um, that's our that's our handle for all of our social media, um, and you can find us on all of those there. Well, excellent, Eric. It has been a pleasure having you on the show today. James, thank you for having me. I really appreciate you highlighting our bowl. It's, uh, it means a lot. Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom has products in stock and available to take home today. With five stores and almost 40 years in business, they are Ohio's appliance experts and they help you to get the right product at the right price with a huge inventory. You can save 30 to 60% every day on everything from Bosch and Viking to LG, GE, and KitchenAid at unbeatable savings and in stock. Plus, Mattress Kingdom inside Appliance Factory has everything from Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, Stearns and Foster, and Dream Cloud mattresses in stock. Stop by any one of Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom's five Ohio locations today or visit online at appliancefactory.com. Good morning, Dreamhouse Nation. James Lewis of TDH joining us today from the Ken Anderson Alliance is, of course, Ken Anderson and Kevin Potts. Guys, thank you all for joining us. Well, thanks for having us, James. Yeah, thanks for having us today. So, Ken, what is the Ken Anderson Alliance? Well, the Ken Anderson Foundation was formed in 2014 and we're trying to make a difference in our nephew's life, who Drew, who's severely autistic. And, you know, the goal was to build a community that he could live in. And we, we you know, we worked and worked. And uh, finally, Mayor Cranley called and said, you know, there's a, a group of Down syndrome parents with the same mission as you. And uh, it was called Lighthouse Landing. And, and we met and there was a tremendous synergy. So then we formed the Ken Anderson Alliance to try to make a difference in the lives of adults with developmental disabilities. That is awesome how your organization has given back to the community and been able to help so many folks. How can the Dreamhouse Nation get involved? Well, I, I think they can get involved by going to Ken Anderson Alliance and, you know, and, and donating and, and supporting some of the, the events that we have. You, know, you can sign up for our newsletter uh, to stay informed on what's going on with KAA. Uh, we've got a great coffee shop, Just Brew, 
uh, over on Plainfield Road, also out in Harrison, Ohio, which is a great place to come and socialize and get a cup of coffee with, with our adults that are, are running that place. And, of course, you, know, you can always go to KenAndersonAlliance.org to find out exactly what we're doing. So how is donating to the uh, KAA a win for everyone? Kevin, I'll let you handle that one. Yeah, so it, it is a, a wonderful way to show support for the organization. But what happens with donations is they come in and they help support our day-to-day programming. So our programming involves our uh, Engage programs, which is our adult day service here uh, in Silverton, where we support over 125 adults weekly uh, in a day service program. It also helps to support the costs and overhead of a Engage program in the evenings, which Uh, involves around 22 to 24 outings on a monthly basis where we go out and do social events uh, with small groups of individuals with disabilities. We do everything from karaoke to bowling to putt-putt to cyclones games, bangles games, all the the fun stuff and uh, get to do those things as, as small groups. And then it also helps us advance our workforce development program. Uh, as Kenny mentioned just a minute ago, we have our Just Fruit Coffee House. Uh, we have one in Silverton. We have one in Harrison. And we're opening one at Children's Hospital at the beginning of the year um, down on Burnett. And it, uh, also we have our Ocho Urban Farms program, which is a hydroponic agricultural training program for adults with disabilities. And all donations go to help support the staffing and education models that go into implementing those services. Because most of our services here are actually free to attendees. Um, we might build waivers for some services, but we try to make all services as accessible as possible, and it takes quite a bit of support from the community in order to do that. Definitely. I know what you mean. It takes a village. And with your organization, you yeah. guys are really organizing folks and getting them moving in the right direction and been able to help so many people. I mean, that's just phenomenal. We, have, we are excited. We are currently serving uh, just over 420 people uh, in the greater Cincinnati area through our live, work, and engage programs. Our live program is not up and running yet uh, with occupancy, but we are still moving forward on completing that project here in the next couple of years. But, you know, we're supporting a a very large group of adults here in the area, and we work together really well with other partners, um, such as the Down Syndrome Association of Greater Cincinnati and the Autism Society um, of Greater Cincinnati as well. We work with them, and a lot of times they, an individual that's supported might get services from one of our partners as well as us, and we help round out that experience and make sure that everything that they're getting comes back kind of holistically to supporting them to be as independent as possible. I understand you all do a lot of great events. What are some of the ones for the beginning of 2023? Well, I tell you, we've got some big ones coming up. And, uh, you know, uh, we've got our Autism Rocks and our Pig Abilities. And Autism Rocks is one of my favorite events. It's going to be February 19th at Lori's Roadhouse in, uh, in Westchester. And this is uh, an inclusive family event. Uh, We're going to have six local bands playing throughout the day. The music is just fantastic. Um, We'll also have a band uh, there, Blue Spectrum, made up of autistic adults. Uh, We've got great food. We've got raffles and special guests throughout the day. Uh, You know, you'll see Bronson Arroyo, the former Red there, performing. Uh, A lot of my former teammates are there. We've got some pro wrestlers that always show up. Uh, So that's a great event. And, and this year is going to be our first year with Pig Abilities as, far, as part of the Flying Pig Marathon weekend. And that is going to take place on Saturday, May 6th. And it's uh, a walk for those with disabilities. So uh, you can find out more about those by going to KenAndersonLions.org and check out our calendar and, and plan to join us there. Oh, definitely. It sounds amazing. I have heard nothing but great things about Lori's Roadhouse. I haven't been able to experience it in person yet, but I understand it is a really great venue. Well, no, it is. I, I wasn't able to attend last year, but uh, uh, fortunately this year, uh, my wife, Christy, and I are moving back to Cincinnati full time. And so I'll be able to spend more time with the foundation and be out to these events. So that's uh, an exciting thing for us. That is awesome. And then, yeah, partnering with the Flying Pig. I mean, that's one of the biggest events in Cincinnati every year. And that is great that they're doing a more inclusive event. I, I do. I think it's a, it's a great opportunity because, uh, you know, it, and, and the way that they pulled it together for Pig Abilities is it, you know, creates that access point for adults with uh, disabilities, even with mobility, you know, significant mobility challenges as well, to be able to participate in a really neat event and feel empowered you know through that activity and then it, it's a great way also to get out there with the general public and help educate 
um, you know, everyone either attending the event, you know, be it our fundraisers or the, you know, the pig ability, you know, or the flying pig and, and help them to see the individuals we support for their abilities instead of their disabilities. And I think that's a huge, huge step in community awareness and education. So, Kevin, how can the Dreamhouse Nation volunteer to be a part of these events? Absolutely. So if they go to KenAndersonAlliance.org, uh, to our website, uh, there is a opportunity there on the About Us to join our team or to help volunteer. And they can navigate there. They can fill out the form online, and it comes into our volunteer coordinator. And they'll reach out and uh, start the process for getting the individual signed up. There is a, a little bit of a screening, <coughs> excuse me, a screening involved, and then um, uh, kind of a short training. But uh, once they go through that, they're able to help us at our events, uh, our fundraisers. They can even uh, all you know, come and volunteer at our adult day service program here and, and help us in a lot of ways as we, we carry out these really important duties. I know you've told us about this before, but tell us a little bit more about Commons at Springfield. I think that's one of our exciting things that we've uh, we've purchased 22 acres uh, out in Springfield Township, and we're going to actually build a community that's a safe, inclusive community uh, for our adults to live in. And, and that's you know kind of why we, why my wife and I got involved is when our uh, our nephew Drew was down in a facility in Pedro, Ohio, and it was. 10 cabins, 10 boys in each cabin, and to see how he thrived in that situation, although it was very rustic, and their community center was a, a double-wide trailer, but he'd be out playing basketball and, and going on walks and those kind of things. And we wanted to see if we couldn't uh, come up with something that could be duplicated as well. And, and Kevin, I'll let you give us a few more details on that. Yeah, and we what we've really focused on is creating a, a community that provides uh, great community inclusion uh, but also uh, is something that will be uh, affordable uh, for adults with disabilities to be able to live there and live independently. And it will allow them to bring in their own service providers um, and be in an environment where they can receive support to be not only as independent as possible, but also empowered to uh, live an independent life. And sometimes that fostering of independence is different than just being independent. It's helping that person to grow and become a part of the society and the community in which they live. And um, part of the you know work we're doing now is finalizing our design on the number of people we can house there. And as it stands right now, we're uh, hoping to provide residential options for uh, just about 200 adults there in the community, which will be a, a, a pretty amazing opportunity to help uh, what has become in Ohio and a lot of states a crisis for DSPs or direct support professionals because they just cannot get enough caregivers to provide these support in settings throughout the community. So in these planned communities, we're able to really capitalize on shared services and a number of other service delivery models that help us to provide more services with fewer people and also provide a higher quality service. And it's really going to be something that's going to be uh, wonderful here in the Cincinnati area. We have modeled this after uh, communities we visited in uh, Florida and in Texas and in Georgia in Indiana and, and a lot of areas where these communities have really taken off and just proven to be such amazing success stories for the adults they support. That is phenomenal. And I understand there are a lot of great amenities and a lot of really great uh, working opportunities in the commons at Springfield. We've got a, you know, a community center that's not only a source of, you know, socialization, but a source of, of job training as well. Uh, we plan to have an, an aquaponics uh, building, uh, again, growing lettuce indoors, also with a cafe for the public to come in. Uh, one of the things that I'm excited about is, is we've got a, a ball field uh, that will be there not only for our use, but for the community's use to come in. And whether it's a, a little league team or a, or a peewee football team that wants to come and practice there, Special Olympics to hold events there, uh, and an amphitheater. Uh, where we have outdoor concerts and entertainment. Wow. I mean, it sounds phenomenal. It sounds like this community, the Commons at Springfield, is going to have everything they're going to need. It, it is. You know, and it, it, it's funny because we're building a community to provide support and, you know, and, and a, a class A living experience for uh, adults with disabilities. And every time I look at the design and I look at what we're having there as far as amenities, I, you know, I keep thinking, okay, which unit's going to be mine because I want to live there. I want to. I want to have an amphitheater I can walk out to and a, and a community center with a gym and restaurant and all these things that I can just, you know, walk over to and be a part of. And 
it's going to be a really wonderful, wonderful opportunity for uh, individuals. And we're designing it in a way that it can be replicated and scaled appropriately for different settings throughout the state so that we can see more and more of these come to fruition and provide even more housing opportunities for, for adults with disabilities. A lot of times, you know, shoot, uh, people like to give presents, you know, to celebrate the, uh, the postseason. Uh, shoot with, I know we got a, a bunch of Bengals fans. Where's the best place to get, uh, you know, fun things to celebrate, uh, celebrate the postseason? I, you know, I would invite people to come to our coffee shop, our Just Brew Coffee Houses. We have all kinds of Kenny Anderson gear there. We have lots of memorabilia. We have jerseys. We have helmets. We have footballs. All kinds of things uh, that they can use to, to you know, champion and celebrate the Bengals and get a great cup of coffee at the same time while supporting our uh, our mission. That is yes, awesome. Yes, and especially after the, after the first of the year, if you stop by, uh, more than likely you'll see me in the coffee shop as well. Nice. Yeah. So uh, Get that jersey signed while you're here. Heck yeah. <laughs> so what inspired you to move back to Cincinnati? Well, you know, I'm sort of the foundation is a part of it, but, you know, we've got uh, six grandchildren between the ages of 11 and 3. And, you know, they are all close together in, in three different families. And, uh, the, 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 you know, we just we want to be more a part of their lives to be able to experience some of the things. Uh, you know, I, I generally see, you know, one of my – uh, 11 year old granddaughter's volleyball matches a year and we went about a month ago and all of a sudden she's serving this rocket serve comes out. I go where did that come from and you know we just want to be a little bit more of you know a part of their lives and and have them be a part of our lives as well and so between that and, and uh you know to my wife's family's from that area and and to be able to enjoy them uh as well and, and certainly then spend more time at the foundation that is awesome. I was going to say I can relate to that. Fortunately, uh, my uh, son has had the uh, pleasure of growing up with both of his grandparents nearby, and it has made a world of difference. So I can imagine those grandkids are going to be thrilled to have you uh, in the life more. Well, you know, I've got one grandson that plays fly football, and I think I can help him out a little bit with that. And, <laughs> you know, most all of them are, are playing basketball, and I, I played college basketball as well, so I think I can coach him up a little bit uh, on that volleyball, I'm going to have to learn a little bit about as well as soccer. That is awesome. <laughs> so, uh, Kevin, before we let you and Ken go, we're on social media, we're on the web. Where's the best place to find out more about the KAA? Yeah, absolutely. So the uh, KenAndersonAlliance.org is our website. Great place to go there. You can actually connect to our social media channels uh, and follow us on Facebook and Instagram and, and on LinkedIn. Uh, we do encourage um, anyone that is on Facebook to search for Ken Anderson Alliance uh, in your search bar and start following us. We have a lot of posts about our upcoming events and opportunities to support us. And our goal for this upcoming year is to, to go over 6,000 followers. So we'd love to have everyone come in, join uh, the Ken Anderson Alliance and follow us on Facebook and our other social media platforms. And then, Come to our website and sign up for our newsletter that comes out once a month. Great way to receive in your email inbox updates about programs, upcoming events, and uh, you know our involvement in the community around us. That is awesome. As always, it is a pleasure having you guys on the show. Absolutely. Well, James, thank you so much for inviting us. Yeah, thank you. And James, have a wonderful holiday. Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom has products in stock and available to take home today. With five stores and almost 40 years in business, they are Ohio's appliance experts and they help you to get the right product at the right price with a huge inventory. You can save 30 to 60% every day on everything from Bosch and Viking to LG, GE, and KitchenAid at unbeatable savings and in stock. Plus, Mattress Kingdom inside Appliance Factory has everything from Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, Stearns and Foster, and Dream Cloud mattresses in stock. Stop by any one of Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom's five Ohio locations today or visit online at appliancefactory.com. Good morning, Dreamhouse Nation. James Lewis of TDH joining us today from the Gator Bowl is Greg McGarity. Greg, thank you for joining us today. My pleasure. Look forward to it, James. So what is the Gator Bowl? Well, the Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, Tax Slayer is our corporate sponsor, uh, is the uh, it's the 78th year of our game we're the sixth oldest bowl in college football so uh we've got two great teams this year that uh south carolina and notre dame that kick off on friday december 30th at 3 30 nice 
So how did it all get started back then? What inspired the Gator Bowl? Well, there was a community effort back in 1946 to promote college sports. And it led to establishment of a, of a bowl game. The first two participants were, oddly enough, South Carolina and Wake Forest. And so uh, for community development and uh, college football interest, it was viewed as uh, a very positive impact on the community. So this year you got uh, South Carolina and uh, Notre Dame, correct? That is correct. Excellent. That is awesome. So how do you pick the teams? Well, we are really assigned teams by the Atlantic Coast Conference and the Southeastern Conference, and uh, we really aren't in a selection mode at this level. Uh, Therefore, we are assigned by the conferences, and they are responsible for putting together matchups that uh, are compelling on a national scale as much as possible. Nice. So when is the Gator Bowl? It's going to be Friday, December 30th at 3.30 p.m. Excellent. So how can the, uh, or where's the best place to watch the game? Well, it'll be on ESPN uh, at 3.30, uh, televised nationally, obviously. So uh, just just get on ESPN and watch the game. Awesome. So how do you, how does it feel to have such a great stadium? Well, we're uh, uh, benefactors, really, of the Jacksonville Jaguars, who obviously are an NFL team. And so we play and compete, and our offices are housed within uh, the football stadium here and all under the Jacksonville Jaguars umbrella. Nice. So, yeah, shoot. Uh, I'm sure there are a lot of great things that happen during the week of the Gator Bowl. Tell us a little bit about them. Well, we don't try to schedule a lot of activities because the two teams stay out at the beach, and uh, we want to make sure that they have uh, a good time and are able to relax and enjoy the environment. And uh, there'll be things that move up as far as day of the game, pep rallies, things of that nature. But really leading into the game, it's kind of quiet for the teams because uh, we want them to enjoy themselves and uh, benefit from everything the state of Florida has to offer. Nice. Where's the best place for our listeners to buy their tickets if they want to come down and experience it in person? Yeah, if they go to Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, one word, TaxSlayerGatorBowl.com, they just can click on the tickets and parking icon and go from there. Awesome. And then last week, I understand, or not last week, last season, it was uh, Wake Forest versus Rutgers. That's correct. It was originally supposed to be uh, Texas A&M against Wake Forest, but Texas A&M chose not to play in the game due to uh, a number of issues, uh, COVID among them. So we had to have a replacement team, and Rutgers uh, was able to fill that void. And so we were able to at least have a bowl game, even though Rutgers was 5-7, and but we were at least able to play the game. Nice. And then uh, shoot. Last year, um, you had a great commentary team. Tell us a little bit about that. Well, we're always proud of our association with ESPN, and certainly they had to do it remotely, unfortunately, because of uh, uh, the problems that existed with the game changing at the last minute. So, and talent change. So, uh, needless to say, the, the deck was reshuffled last year, but mm-hmm. I know we've got a great team announcing this year and ready to go. And just, you know, you mentioned the history of the Gator Bowl. There have been so many great players that have went on to success in the NFL and success in life. Tell us about some of those players. Well, I was just looking at the 1980 Gator Bowl game, and you had Hugh Green representing uh, Pittsburgh, and you had George Rogers representing South Carolina. So uh, Lamar Jackson has played here. I mean, the, the list goes on and on as far as individuals that have really excelled in this game and have gone on to uh, to success in other forms of life. Sam Hartman from Wake Forest was the MVP last year. I mean, we've had Joe Hamilton from Georgia Tech. We've had uh, so many great players. Al Hunter back in 1976 from Notre Dame uh, played. Uh, we just had really a lot of success there, and uh, a lot of great things have gone on, and uh, certainly – a lot of memorable moments over the last 70, 77 years. And as I said, this will be the 78th year. 
Definitely. So tell us about the importance of the uh, Tax Slayer and how great they do as a sponsor for you all. Well, they've been with us for uh, a number of years and over a decade. So uh, they are located in Augusta, Georgia, and are one of the largest tax preparing companies uh, in, in the United States. So we're very fortunate to have them associated with us. And obviously, South Carolina is a, a prime area for their growth and development of their product. And they're well known in Florida as well as Georgia and uh, up the East Coast. So a lot of great things for them and able to really promote their brand. And certainly, there'll be mil- millions of people watching on ESPN on the 30th. Exactly. Well, it has been a pleasure having you on the show. Before we let you go, Greg, where on social media, where on the web, where can we find out more about the Gator Bowl? Well, uh, really, we try to direct it to one to our website, uh, Tax Slayer Gator Bowl, but uh, you can go on and just really just Google Gator Bowl and w- without Tax Slayer or have Tax Slayer in there. I think it'll bring you to uh, our, our many web pages, Twitter accounts, things of that nature. So uh, just encourage everybody to follow up on that. Sounds great. It's uh, been a pleasure having you on the show today. Yes, sir. Y'all take care. Bye-bye. Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom has products in stock and available to take home today. With five stores and almost 40 years in business, they are Ohio's appliance experts and they help you to get the right product at the right price with a huge inventory. You can save 30 to 60% every day on everything from Bosch and Viking to LG, GE, and KitchenAid at unbeatable savings and in stock. Plus, Mattress Kingdom inside Appliance Factory has everything from Tempur-Pedic and Sealy, Stearns and Foster, and Dream Cloud mattresses in stock. Stop by any one of Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom's five Ohio locations today or visit online at appliancefactory.com. Good morning, Dream House Nation. James Lewis of TDH joining us today from Duke's Mayo Bowl is Miller Yoho. Miller, thank you for joining us today. It's exciting to be here. I'm actually standing in the press box at Bank of America Stadium. I'm so excited. I'm camping out here every day just to get ready for the game. That is awesome. It's got to have a great view up there to be able to see the whole field. And just, oh, I can imagine you're the intensity looking forward to the big game. What is the Duke's Mayo Bowl? Yeah, so we are a postseason football game. There's uh, 40 bowl games, but we like to think that we're a little bit extra special. We've... uh, been in Charlotte is be our 21st year under a variety of different names, but this is our third Duke's Mayo Bowl, and uh, I think people probably know us best for uh, our weird, our, our fun mascot, for uh, our Mayo Dump, and for uh, just the wild games we like to have here and the fun we like to have in the postseason. That is awesome. So, how did it all get started? Yeah, so um, the game is it, it's evolved and grown, and it's incredible. Um, currently, we have ACC and Big Ten teams. We have. NC State facing off Maryland, um, two old rivals coming back together. If you if you grew up in ACC country like I did, you know that these are fan bases that aren't the best of friends. But we also work with the SEC on uh, odd years. So it's always ACC, SEC, or ACC Big Ten. And it's just been great as the Bulls grown. We have two incre- our three incredible conferences and two incredible teams this year playing. Now, I didn't think to look this up ahead of time, and I probably should have. Beans, you do ACC. Has there ever been a Duke's Mayo Bowl where Duke is in the Mayo Bowl? Uh, it was, but it was the Belk Bowl at the time. It was actually, I was at the game, and if you Google Will Monday punt, it is one of the coolest punts you'll ever see. I was I was in the upper deck, and I'll never forget that punt. It's my favorite play in bowl history, but that was the last time Duke played in it. But I keep getting pressure to select Duke and James Madison, so we have the Duke playing the Dukes in the Dukes Mayo Bowl. Oh, that would be phenomenal. Oh, that's got to happen one of these years. So <laughs> so it sounds like you decided by there's an ACC team, and you get a, either a Big Ten or SEC, depending on the year, it sounds like. That's correct, yeah. So this year is um, our, actually our first year having Big Ten fans in Bank of America Stadium in, in Charlotte. Uh, last year, we or in 2020, was obviously a COVID year. We had Wisconsin. It was incredible. Um, we, had, we gained a lot of friends in Wisconsin for it, but we never had fans to be able to come here and experience what Charlotte is, and we could not be excited to see the, uh, the Terrapins come and enjoy the Queen City and uh, enjoy uh, the game here. Yeah, I was going to say, unfortunately, where I'm at in Cincinnati, Wisconsin's now a swear word. So, 
<laughs> oh man, that, you guys had yeah. Cincinnati uh, has an interesting bowl game with some coaching dynamics. It looks like exactly. Yeah, fortunately, he's decided not to coach at all. But that would have been awkward him coaching either team. So yeah, so <laughs> he he made the right choice. So when is the Duke Mayo Bowl? Yeah, it's December 30th at noon. Um, it's uh, going to be broadcast on ESPN. But even if you're a neutral fan or you're a friend in Cincinnati, we'd love to have you. I can tell you we had about an hour-long meeting earlier this week where we went through everything we're going to be doing in stadium. And I don't think there's going to be a sporting event that has this much fun and also some great football teams playing. So I really encourage people to watch on TV. But if you can make it to the game, it's going to be incredible. Yeah, tell us about how awesome it is to be able to play your games at Bank of America Stadium. Yeah, in Charlotte, we're really blessed with um, some incredible facilities, including Bank of America Stadium. The Panthers and, and Tupper Sports Entertainment are just incredible hosts. Uh, they've been tremendous when it comes to planning all of our events from the ACC Championship to the Duke's Mayo Classic and now the Duke's Mayo Bowl each year. And then we also have an incredible city. So city, county, CRVA, what we have in Charlotte is just great harmony among organizations to put on sporting events that people love. We know sports is big um, for our hospitality industry, and we want as many people to come in and celebrate and have fun. And I don't think there's a better city than Charlotte. I'm very proud of myself. You have said Charlotte several times, and neither one of us have yelled "woo" into the phone. Yeah. So, yeah, we haven't done the two claps in the wheel. Exactly. It's just one of those things that uh, when you hear the Charlotte, it makes me think of that. So, where is the best place for the Dream House Nation to buy those tickets? Yeah, I'd always recommend people going to Ticketmaster. We use uh, mobile tickets only, so that's the easiest way. And you can use our Charlotte Sports Foundation app. Get in the stadium. You can uh, injury exit to the stadium is amazing. So our entire fan experience from the per- moment you buy your tickets on Ticketmaster to getting in the stadium, we make it as easy as possible. So encourage people to use that way, and uh, we look forward to having fans in. So what are the other events that are happening in the week of? I, I can imagine there are all kinds of great things going on. Yeah, we really pride ourselves on having the best plan, uh, fan and player experience possible. The players get to go to the Speedway and ride 160 miles an hour around Charlotte Motor Speedway. I don't think any other bowl game can do that. Um, they also get to do some community work in town. They get media days. They treat it to a full experience as players. And for fans, we know that uh, tailgating is important to our title sponsor, Duke's Mayo. So we want fans to come in tailgate, find your spot in Charlotte, set up early, have some soda pops, get ready for the big game. So we really lean into having a stadium that's in the heart of uh, what we call Uptown. That's downtown for us and all our hotels around it. So we don't, we don't try to over-program. We want fans to come in and, and experience the city themselves and, and have that tailgating that uh, I don't think is unrivaled. You can't really – there are very few places you can tailgate in a city like this. I can imagine last year was a heck of an atmosphere. South Carolina versus North Carolina, I mean, that must have been some intensity. Yeah, no, it's great. That's a, those are two, well, uh, two fan bases that are very close in proximity um, who like to say which one is Carolina. And the, the exciting thing is actually we have both those teams coming back to kick off this season in 2023. So we'll be back at Bank of America Stadium uh, for the Dukes Mayo Classic. We'll have both those fan bases who we love and, and had a great time with last year. Oh, that is phenomenal. And then another great thing about the event, uh, your your uh, uh, commentators are top-notch. I mean, you have Mike Golick Jr., and you have some other really great ones. Tell us about that. Now, ESPN will get me in trouble if I didn't share who it is this year, but I can say we are very excited about our broadcast team. ESPN is a tremendous sponsor to uh, most every bowl game, and we know that uh, we know that our, our sponsors have always leaned into the the, the – organized chaos that is the Duke's Mayo Bowl and the fun we like to have with fans. So I think even as people watch on TV, they'll be able to see what it's like that we like to to celebrate mayonnaise the way we do. Nice. And then, of course, I love how your players from the bowl games have gone on to such great success in the NFL. Nick Chubb, Dak Prescott, and others. Tell us a little about some of those success stories. Yeah, we've had some really incredible pros come through here. Dak Prescott's last game was in the bowl game in the rain against NC State. So that was the last time NC State was in the bowl game. Uh, Nick Chubb, you mentioned, I remember that in 2014, he was just a freshman. And our eyes were huge as he, I think, went for over 200 yards against Louisville. Uh, we've had some just tremendous pros come through. And then also we've had uh, players who did go pro who are just tremendous people. And that's really why we lean into this full player experience of not only did they get the fun of going on the speedway, but we try to do community work and things like that with our team. So you're having these amazing players like Larry Fitzgerald who get to go around 
a NASCAR, but he's also getting to come and make an impact on Charlotte. That is awesome. It's great that uh, the Duke's Mayo Bowl has done such wonderful things. Where on social media, where on the web, where can our listeners find out more about you? Yeah, there's always dukesmayobowl.com. Um, and then our, our Twitter account's look. But we like to have fun with college football, so that's at Duke's Mayo Bowl, and that's the same as Instagram and Facebook. So we encourage people to follow along. We, we like to have fun. We want to we want to be a part of the experience and have your second screen open following us on Twitter as we uh, talk about the game and all the activities that are going on. Sounds phenomenal. It's been a pleasure having you on the show today, Miller. Thank you so much. I really appreciate your time. Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom has products in stock and available to take home today. With five stores and almost 40 years in business, they are Ohio's appliance experts and they help you to get the right product at the right price with a huge inventory. You can save 30 to 60% every day on everything from Bosch and Viking to LG, GE, and KitchenAid at unbeatable savings and in stock. Plus, Mattress Kingdom inside Appliance Factory has everything from Tempur-Pedic, Sealy, Stearns & Foster, and Dream Cloud mattresses in stock. Stop by any one of Appliance Factory and Mattress Kingdom's five Ohio locations today or visit online at appliancefactory.com. That wraps it up for this week's show. Hope you can join us again next week for this dream house. This has been James Lewis. Enjoy your weekend.